All right, for next section for TA South Bounders is Nungun Guru to Wapau. Pardon my pronunciation again. So I titled this section, even though we stayed at Vicky's Farm, which is a few miles past that town, because in regular times when the official trail is open, most people will probably stay at James Place and the miles will be pretty similar. You might have a few extra miles to get to Wapau, so it might turn it from 40.6 miles into 43, 44, somewhere in that ballpark, but very similar mileage. So this day we had a goal to get to the Ratahu Bay car park because we you have to schedule a ferry um, at the end of this day to get across this very wide channel. So the day starts out, we have a little bit of road walk to finish up. And then as soon as the road walk ends a few miles down the road, you have a couple bridges to cross. And along this way, very, very beautiful ocean ways. And it's really cool to see a TA sign that they're letting cars know that TA walkers are walking that road. So as the road ends, you junction off into your first, I would say, major tidal kind of hurdle here. So we timed it three hours on the other side of low tide. They recommend only doing it at low tide and you can see why so where I'm walking right now is about shin high and at very dead low tide it would just be muddy marsh so kind of pick your preference you can do it um, not exactly right at low tide but you will be wading in the water deeper than you may prefer so as you can see magpies in there about knee deep it does get deeper and shallower throughout the trek along this estuary and what we did is if you do time it at a higher tide just follow the banks you can see there's a ta marker out in the inlet there and those markers are definitely for dead low tide or close to it because if you would have walked straight across where my trekking poles are pointing you would <laughs> probably be swimming at this tide right here so use common sense and follow the formation of the land try to stay to those banks as close as possible you still will hit deeper pockets along the way but overall it's all affordable. You don't have to do any swimming. As you can see, Magpie is about, I don't know, shin high right there. It just fluctuates. Again, it's tidal. So sometimes you'll pop out and just be walking purely land. I think if you do it mostly at low tide, this is what you will see most of the time. Um, very small pieces of water. And as you can see, the TA marker <laughs> is no water around it. So that's good. But then you find more pockets. You find more pockets of water. You can see Magpie's about to go hip high here, and this is where it gets a little more tricky. So you're still following the formation of the land, but then the suggestion, this is the main ford coming up of the Tahuni estuary. They have these markers here, and what you want to do is shoot from marker to marker. There are going to be deeper channels as you cross that, but you're aiming for those orange posts. So you just set a course and you go. <laughs> and you hope that you don't hit too deep of a pocket. Again, I would recommend for most people, if you can, time it a little less close to high tide. I would even try to say time it at low tide if you can, but each day works out how it works out. So your timing may be a little off, maybe more accurate. Either way, it's not that bad of a forward, but it is on the North Island. If you're going southbound, your first major, major tidal forward. You'll have a few more coming up in the future, but this is your first major one and you get out of it you get your shoes covered with a little bit of pluff mud so it's a very flavorful day and once you finish that forward this day is kind of full of logistical obstacles you have a long long climb to the top of Cowie Mountain again part of my pronunciation it starts off on gravel road to track and it's a very quick climb once you get into single track it has a little bit of steps as you're gonna see here shortly but pretty much you pop up to the top there and you can see your future of Ocean Beach and Bream's Head, which I just pointed at there. And you want to time Ocean Beach again if you can on low tide and you ask yourself, how do I time the estuary and Ocean Beach on low tide? Just do the best you can. Um, Ocean Beach, you don't have to exactly time at low tide. It's just easier walking the lower it is because if it's high tide, it pushes you up into that soft sand and your pace will get cut a little bit. So this is Ocean Beach. You can see Bream's Head again in the future um, down the way. And along Ocean Beach, you do have the opportunity of two camping areas. One is called Jagger's Camp, I believe, and the other is Ocean Beach Camp. If your miles link up, you can camp there and tackle Bream's Head the next day. I would recommend if you get there later in the day to probably camp at one of those two places because 
Bream's Head is a beast, which you will see shortly. This is the car park for the Ocean Beach camp campsite. You can walk down at like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and you'll be there. So after a quick lunch, we decided to go and tackle Bream's Head. And Bream's Head, I would say, is the first legitimate prolonged climb. You've had climbs going southbound along the Te Aurora, <clears throat> but this is the first like long, long prolonged climb. And it kind of gives you the flavor of what volcanic hills, I guess, are in New Zealand because the ascent initially a few thousand feet, very consistently up, beautiful broad sweeping views along the way, but it is very, very consistently up. You have steps in there, you have mud pockets, you kind of have the full flavor of a climb in New Zealand. You had the grasslands earlier and your pace will take a hit in this chunk of trail. Um, again, being generous, maybe a two mile per hour pace. You do have downhill on the backside, but even then that downhill, as you will see shortly, is pretty chunky. So you climb up and you get to the top and then you do these little kind of micro ups and downs until your next larger climb, which is 700 feet about. But these micro ups and downs from the top of Bream's Head to the next top of an unnamed peak is probably the harder chunk because there's a lot of mud, there's a lot of kind of tight track as you see here, and it's just very sharply up and very sharply down. So even if the elevation profile reads like, oh, it looks pretty easy, this is probably the slowest portion of the, the trail right here. Um, the uphill, of course, you're going to go slower than three miles per hour, but this will slow your pace down pretty significantly. So more stairs <laughs> are on your arrival. Pray for your knees. And then you just descend really sharply down to the next bay. So you pop out of the track and I would recommend carrying water from Ocean Beach up and over the track. You could detour if you saw a few scenes ago to one of those huts to get water, but pretty much without detouring to that hut, it is dry up there and will be sweating a lot. So <clears throat> pack up water. But once you get to the end of the track on the other side, there is also water. So once you finish that up, you have a few road miles, as you saw around these bays to Ratoa Bay proper. And if you get here early enough, there's a little town behind that hill that you can pop into and get a few snacks. We got there too late to, for opening hours, but you can camp right here at the Ratoa Bay car park and you have to catch a water taxi across this inlet. As you see, it's not swimmable or affordable, big shipping containers. So if you can camp right at that car park, it's nice because it's point one away and you pop on it with Blair and he'll bring you to the other side. I would coordinate that water taxi in advance because Blair is kind of the main guy that shuttles most people across and he has specific time windows you can hit. Um, he is flexible, really cool guy. So I would coordinate the water taxi a day or two ahead. And once you get to the other side, you have beach walking again for a good chunk of the change. And somehow the beach fluctuates between hard pack and soft pack. So even though you think you're gonna be stepping off really quick miles, the pace again may take a hit in there. And then you hit this river called the Rukaka River. And the Rukaka River does have some pinch points. If it's too deep at the mouth, go inland a little bit. And the farther you go inland, the shallower it should get. Um, pick and choose your crossing points, whatever makes you feel comfortable. We cross again around that two or three hour before low tide mark. And as you can see, the deepest it got on Magpie was right below waist level. Um, right now she's about knee, but deepest pockets were about waist. So it is an obstacle, um, try to time that correctly. And then after the Rukaka River, you have more beach walk. This beach walk is re really different than the beach before Rukaka. Um, it is mostly hard packed sand that you can really move and groove on and get your pace high up in there. So this beach will lead you into ultimately a road walk into the official town of Wapu. Wapu has a four square grocery store um, where you can resupply. It has a lot of restaurants. It has motels, hotels, um, but most hikers probably stay at the Wapu Cove camp, which is a few extra miles out of town. So if you're planning on staying there, get your groceries in town and walk about two or three more miles out of town to Wapu Cove. So Wapu Cove is very similar to a holiday park, um, same type of amenities. It's just called Wapu Cove Camp. The miles out of town, as you can see, you're able to stay off the road for the most part. This, there's this nice gravel path along there. And once you get into Wapu Cove, full amenities, like I said, as holiday parks, shower, laundry, 
um, full kitchen that you can cook any food that you packed out of town. And it just is a perfect bouncing off point for the section ahead. Um, you can do all the necessities you can do. And this is the kind of layout of a standard, standard holiday park cabin. I wanted to show you that as well as show you the good food that we had. So that's that section. Um, let's get forward to the next one.